ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of almost all ages, with parental consent. The Sick Twisted Minds at Sacrificial Pond Productions brings you a new style of horror film, like nothing you have seen before. There are no cops, no investigations. There is no backstory, no follow-up of the victims who are brutally tortured and murdered. Our story isn't about them. Normal terror is about a single dad struggling to make ends meet. His son is his first priority. He goes to work, pays his bills, and is generally a great dad. The twist comes after he puts his son to bed. This is where he releases his stress. Some people do yoga, some hit the gym, some go for runs, some people paint on a canvas. An anonymous source once wrote on an abandoned asylum wall, I never understood people until I took one apart just to see how it worked. If you are rear-ended in traffic, most people's thought runs to anger and their primal instincts of hurting the other party. Sam Neill does not have the ability to stop that primal instinct. Let us take you into the mind of a killer. Normal Terror is a concept from the mind of Sam Mason, who wrote, directed, produced, and is starring in this new age feature film. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Welcome to Horror with Sir Sturdy, Episode 4. Today, I have my cousin on as a guest, my cousin Michael, and we're doing uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2003, and I'm just going to jump right into it like I do with the last few episodes. So, first question is, what got you into horror? Uh, my older brother. And if you can remember, what was the first movie you seen, and what was the first movie that scared you as a kid? Uh, honestly, I don't know the first movie I saw, but the first movie I remember being scared of was, I don't even know the title of the film, but there were like these little, some little kind of characters and they were fucking people up. And like, one was some kind of doll where like she hacked some kind of shit on you. Does it come out of her mouth? Uh, nah, I don't think so. I think... No, it's more like you hold the, you hold the, whatever the fuck it is, and like if you squeeze it, then it's fucking the person up. That, you get what I'm saying? Like whatever you do to that voodoo doll, it's like breaking that person's limbs. If you bend that leg on that doll, sure. you, you could just be legged running, and your leg is getting bent. I wish I knew what movie you were talking about. That sounds pretty interesting. My dad right there. put me onto that though. I forgot. That's dope. And um, again with the horror like. For me, as you know, it's my favorite genre of all, all the you know the genres and stuff. But is it like one of your top ones? You would say, or yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Just, I know we were messing with him earlier, but did you try to get your son into horror yet? Yeah, he. I let him watch the uh, older version of, or no, the newer version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 2009 version, I believe. Okay. Whichever one we initially tried to watch, and then... 2003? Oh, you, the yeah. beginning, the new beginning or yeah. whatever. You, The one we watched on accident the last time, okay. Yeah. And how'd he take it? Uh, he was scared. Woke up, nightmares. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. You ready to get into this movie? Yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2000, from 2003. You chose this movie, and I'm just going to ask you... Why'd you choose this? Well, this Texas one? Chainsaw Massacre as a whole series has always been one of my favorite uh, horror movies because just the fact that it was so real, like it really happened. Like I always love horror movies. And then once I found out, once I came to an age where I realized they weren't real, it was just make believe. Mm -hmm. And then when I found out that this was actually inspired by a true story, 
it kind of blew me away after I watched it. Just okay. to think that a family could all come together like that and take over a town in such a vicious manner, I guess I would say. Yeah, that is pretty dope. I, I believe, though, if I'm not, again, I could be mistaken, but I believe it was based off vaguely, like a little bit off uh, Edward Gein. I don't know if his whole family was involved in it, but they'd added more, you know, they have to add more for the movie. But overall, dope movie series. I do, I have to see the original again, or I haven't seen that in years. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen that, too. And part two is... That was a lot more in-depth from what I remember, though. The older ones. More in-depth. This... Uh, like the 70s, I'd say. Yeah. Or whenever the older one came out, I think those <laughs> ones were, like, almost three hours long. Like, it, I remember watching it, and, like, the, they would actually sit down at the table and eat family, or yeah. eat dinner with the family. Yep, yep. I remember, we'll get into the 2003 one, but uh, I remember watching the old one with your brother. This was years ago. Bad one. When you had the room at your mom's in the back. Yeah. I think you were in there, too. We were all chilling in there, because we used to watch, you know, we used to watch horror movies and all that kind of stuff, eat some good food. But I remember watching that one for the first time with him. And I wish I could remember the movie well, but it was just like, it was dope. It was, I definitely got to see it again because I haven't seen it in so long, so I can't remember the movie very well. But like, mm. just in general, like I remember back when we were kids going to your mom's house and we could rent a movie every week. Mm. And we come over on the weekends, get some candy and food. And there's this place that um, for any children that will, if they're listening to this, there's these places they used to call uh, the movie, the video store where you'd get a VHS tape or a DVD later on down the road. But you go get a VHS tape, you actually have to go out of your house. They're, like You couldn't watch the stuff on the internet. You have to go out, you know, outside and get these movies. Get them for, like, the weekend. Grab a couple movies. We'd always grab a horror movie, one or two of those, and, like a funny movie, and have, like, candy, pizza, and all that good stuff. And uh, I miss those days. Super videos where we used to go by your mom's, right? Yeah, that and Blockbuster. And blockbuster, and then... For me and uh, Christian and Henry, when we were kids, and Schenectady, we used to go to Screen Gems. It was like right up the street from us. Mm -hmm. Same difference. And when they closed down, bought mad games and stuff, movies and stuff from there. But I miss those type of days where you just go out, get a horror movie, get the family and friends together, and just have a good time watching the movies. I think we need to we need to do that again and have a podcast about that. Like right after, that'd be fun. Yeah. So getting back into the movie. You said, you know, this is, like, your favorite series. Was this, like, your favorite one out of the whole series, or? Uh, it was my favorite one of the, all the newer ones. Okay. Because I like uh, the slashing scenes in this one the best. And Jessica Biel. And Jessica Biel. <laughs> and I don't know, the, all the other ones after this just felt kind of, like, half done to me. I don't know. I I get what you're saying. The one that we, the, I want to say 2006, 2009, I'll look that up and correct it in a minute. But the new beginning, mm -hmm. that one that we were accidentally watching, was yeah. not bad, but I do get what you're saying. Like, this one, this one's good. This one's fun. It's, yeah, it's it was fun. So, you know, it can rattle off the characters' names. There was uh, a group of friends. They're going to see a Skinner concert. Mm-hmm. In Dallas, Texas, <clears throat> and you know there was the Kemper was the driver. They had two pounds of weed in the car. Yes, they did. That was in a pinata. Yeah. Kemper was the driver. Aaron was uh, his girlfriend sitting in the shotgun. Jessica Biel. Yeah, Jessica Biel. I didn't get everyone else's names, so I should have looked that up. Like their, uh, their. I mean, I got their names in the movie, but not their real names, like uh, the actors' okay, names. Okay. But there was, yeah, like you said, Jessica Biel played Aaron. Um, Kemper, I guess Michael's looking that up for us. So Kemper, he was her boyfriend. He was driving. Then there was the fifth wheel slash, all of them were stoners except for uh, Aaron. But there was a fifth wheel slash stoner slash a little bit of comic relief in a sense, Morgan. Yeah. And then um, there was another couple in the back seat, which and, I'm not. I'm, and Andy was the Andy. guy with the blonde hair. Yeah. And his girlfriend was Pepper. Was Pepper. And um didn't they say at some point that they picked her that they picked up Pepper? 
or that they kind of just met, met her because like nineteen hours. Nineteen because they said you. Could, she said some. I believe Aaron said to Pepper about her boy about Kemper that you know you only know him for nineteen hours. Yeah, because she said he was. Cool that doesn't something. necessarily mean that they didn't. She didn't know her though. That just means that Kemper didn't. So we don't really know. Okay. For all we know, they could have been friends, but she had just met Kemper. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I was thinking about that during the movie because they didn't really speak up on it. Because, it, I mean... It's not important. Yeah. It's but not. later on, well, we didn't mention this yet, but when they do pick up the hitchhiker... Oh, let's get right into that. Uh, later on in there, they say, uh, why did we pick up a hitchhiker? So, obviously, they weren't That's true. That, as a matter of fact, when you said that, too... Just you saying that in the movie, I was thinking, wait a minute, maybe she wasn't a hitchhiker. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily a hitchhiker. Like, say, maybe they met her the night before at a party or something. I don't know. I, again, yeah. that's not really important. But so we're get, we might as well get right into that. And they pick up the hitchhiker. It's just this random, white, dirty white girl walking down the street on a fucking dirt path in Texas. And were they making out or arguing? Arguing. Or no, they were making out, and then after... The driver and the passenger were making out. Yeah. Right after they get done making out, he almost swerves into her. He, yeah, he, and he swerves around from her, and they're all screaming and acting crazy. And my first thing is, why the fuck did you stop and get out? Like, what's... You're in the middle of nowhere, and you see a random hitchhiker, and the first... You, you see you didn't hit her. Okay, cool. Look out the window. You okay? She don't say shit? Fuck it. I'm driving off. But these guys, maybe it's a white thing. I don't know. They got out, stopped, pretty much convinced her to get in the van, and then this is where the this is where the fun starts. You want to go with this part? Yeah. At what point do you pick up a hitchhiker? <laughs> Me? It's a sunny day. You got a van full of five people. It's a single person. And the girl. You don't think a girl could take down five of you, do you? And she's just a single girl walking. Put it this way. I've seen you almost hit her. If your wife demands you to stop the vehicle, are you going to stop? No. And she's not going <laughs> to do that. This is hypothetically speaking. She does. You what? almost just take somebody's life. She's. What if she's not a, a dirty white girl? She can be a clean white girl. I mean, it doesn't matter what color she is. She can be a clean or dirty Spanish or black girl, too. It doesn't matter her race. You're in the middle of nowhere. You don't know the person at all, obviously. And it's just like... And the way she was walking down the middle of the road kind of just was strange. Like, you don't see people just doing that shit. Even if they're drugged... Well, maybe if they're drugged out of their mind or some shit, I don't know. But I'm like, I would stop, peek out the window. Okay, we didn't hit her. She's okay. She's still fucking walking the same way she was. Let's go. Let's get the fuck out of here. Okay. And then... To get into that, say they did stop and check on her, and she, remember how she was like saying, you know, I want to go home, mm -hmm. and all that. I'm like, well, go home, shit. The fuck you, tell me for. But that's my thing on that. What about you? Well, I can't drive, so I don't think I'll ever have to make that decision. Well, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, because there is handicap accessible vehicles where you could drive, or. Since Billy and Christian are in the background, I'm going to ask you guys the same question. You guys can join in on this. Just come a little closer. Say Billy's driving. Do you convince him to pull over and pick up a hitchhiker? I mean, in, in defense of the argument, why not? We're driving to a concert. There's somebody walking. Not somebody, but it's just a female it's different if you see fucking Thomas Hewitt walking down the road with a chainsaw and not falling over. Well, yeah, I hope not. Okay, <laughs> but I'm but saying, like, it's a single female or just a single person that looks unharmful, you would say, right? She doesn't look too harmful. Yeah. Against five people, I mean, we could probably handle our own. We didn't initially. All right, so your girlfriends make you stop the van, then they both hop out. That's true. So at this point, your wife makes you stop the van just for the sake of conversation. Mm -hmm. She hops out. Are you gonna pull off on your wife now? No, I'm I'll go grab yoke her ass up and throw her. What are you? What the fuck are so you? So the other guy's girlfriend um, does the same thing. Yeah, Henry's wife hops out, and you didn't yoke her up. 
and put her in the van. She's still out there trying to convince this girl to get back in the van. Are you going to leave Henry's wife? I'm not going to leave Henry and his wife because that would be fucked up. And okay, so here we are stuck. We got she it. would get out. Francis would also get out. So it would be a big fuck up. Yeah. So then it's like, but the... I guess for the sake of the argument, if they tried to, if they somehow convince us, even though we know how they really are, yeah, I don't know what I would do in that situation. All right, so you're stuck with this girl in the back of your car. You're driving down the road. They're in the back trying to convince, or trying to talk to her, convince her to open up. And she's up. all quiet and, and shit. She's quiet, shaky. Pulls a gun out of her crush. Hang on, but before she does that, though. Remember she passes the gas station size barbecues that you said you'd be all for going, even mm-hmm. though they serve people there? Mm-hmm. When she seen that sign, she said she didn't want to go back that way. She started freaking out. Mm-hmm. Now, my nigga instincts are going to kick. I'm going to get, well, what's going on? Why don't you want to, you know, I don't want to go back there. Yeah. That's going to freak me the fuck out. Yeah, they didn't really pay too much attention to that. They never do. If you think about, and this goes with other horror movies, like I can think of, I don't remember the exact one. Friday the 13th, there was an old dude who's always drunk, Crazy Ralph. When they were heading towards, <coughs> excuse me, they stopped at a rundown gas station or whatever. They're getting ready to go to Camp Crystal Lake. He warned them not to go there. He said, you're all doomed. They all of them getting killed except for like one person. But like if I see something like that, I'm like, okay, something fucked up's going on. First of all, we picked up a damn hitchhiker, which we're all against. And then you get the hitchhiker. And they're freaking the fuck out in the car when you're going towards this thing. So I'm like, I've seen enough horror movies. You hear about enough crazy shit going on out in these woods, out in these crazy ass dead end areas. I think we should go back the other way. I mean, fuck the concert. Get mad all you want. Fuck the concert. Let's find a different route. Let's go back the other way. That's another funny thing about that is like, again, they had to do it for the movie, but they're going to Dallas. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about Texas. I don't know what part of Texas they're coming from. But I feel like there's more than one road to get into Dallas. Yeah. Especially if you're going to a... You know, they're going to Dallas. Yeah. To go to a fucking concert. There has to be one... Then just one back dirt road. They seen... As far as I remember, we seen no other cars on that road during this time in the movie. hmm What the fuck is going on? Yeah. So, basically, that's like a run downtown. Yeah. That nobody lives in anymore. The population is just them, but that nobody fit. knows that until they drive through. Makes sense. So, uh. Then we can get into where she shot herself, which was. It was such an awesome scene. Like, she put the. She pulls the gun out of her pussy, which is fucking crazy right there to me. Like, first of all. I guess that explains why she's walking the way she was, because, you know, she's kind of walking kind of stiff. Does that also so, explain why she was wet when uh, the cop put his <laughs> hand in <laughs> Oh, we didn't get there yet, but that was funny. Hey, maybe. Who knows? Because she, if you were, if you seen the thing before she pulled the gun out, remember she was, like, leaning forward? Mm-hmm. Did you see the blood, like, in between her legs? Yeah, yeah. So, that could have been something. <coughs> and then, yeah, she fucking, what the fuck did she say? She didn't want to go back. She wanted to go home, and she pulled the gun out, and they all started screaming and crying, yelling and shit. She put the gun in her mouth, fucking blew her brains out. But it was just that scene was cool just the way it looked. Like, mm-hmm. I would never want to see that shit in real life. I'd probably pass out and start crying shit on myself or something. But, like, you know, see the fucking back window will explode, the big hole in the back window, her brains, blood everywhere. Fucking hole through her mouth, and then when her head was, like, sitting up and then just, like, went back slow. And you see the smoke coming out of her mouth. I was like, oh, they they really went in there. And her head collapses back. Yeah, with the smoke coming out. That was that that was was an awesome scene. That was probably actually one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. Yeah, I agree. That's when when I saw that in the theater because I did see this movie in the theater. Uh, Did we see this movie in the theater together? Probably. I feel like we did. I know I seen. I feel like I seen this in theaters. I feel like we all went and seen it together. Maybe your mother brought. You know what? I remember now, if this is the same movie, because we used to go to see the horror movies with your mother, and we sat up upstairs in the wheelchair section, yeah. and your mother would always sit like right here in the row in front of us, yeah. and I believe this is the movie where like her and the whole row freaking jumped at something, me and you were sitting up there rolling. Yeah. The, this, I think this was the movie. I don't remember what part it was. It wasn't that part, but... but yeah, once you see that scene in the movie, you know that this movie is about to be good. Yeah. 
Um, I'm trying to think what else I can say to you. Again. So we get to, we get from that, you know, they, she shoots her, she shoots herself. We don't even get the girl's name, right? No, we don't. No. Anyway, she kills herself, and uh, Pepper, they all get out the car. Pepper throws up, yeah. the other girl in the movie. They're all talking, talking about calling the cops. And so then they have a debate. Do we just dump the body? Yep. Or, or do we do we wait for the car or do we call the call cops? Call the police. That's when they had, then they had the little argument and fucking that pinata we discussed the Two, two minutes ago. With it's two some, it's weed it. somewhere in Texas. If somebody could go get that for me. I'd appreciate it. Well, this is 14 years ago now. I don't think it's still there. I think after they heard about that slaughtering, they didn't want to go back there and look for it. Hey, you it might still know. be there. But he's saying this because Kemper went to the van, grabbed the fucking pinata. His boys are bugging out like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> the reason we came here. <laughs> that would have been, Well, no, they went to Mexico. Oh, well, yeah, that. but that's the reason. They, their friends are under the impression that's the reason they went to Mexico. Obviously, to go on vacation, get fucked up, but they wanted the two pounds of weed. And, mm-hmm. and he was talking about Kemper was... also on the low. If you see later in the scene, Kemper gets. Should we get into that? We can. Well, we could say he throws the, he throws a pinata. He grabs it. They're on the side of the road. He just fucking throws it. And we can get into that now. But yeah, uh, his boys are like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Mm-hmm. And he, he was pissed. Or they were pissed. Especially fucking Andy. Morgan was kind of just like, because he was high as shit. He was flipping the fuck out. That's what I forgot to mention. The backtrack to in the car seat. Because he was like, I'm so fucking high. And after the girl shot or something, he's like, I don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> and he grabbed his head. <clears throat> and this was like right before they jumped out of the truck, the van. And now jumping back to when he throws the weed. At some point, he goes up to, or no, um, Kemper throws it, you know, on the side of the road. It's, like, all farmland, so he throws it there. You see a cow that moves, and me and Michael started fucking dying. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so then Aaron's standing on the side, like, in the little farm-ish area on the side of the road in the grass. Kemper comes up next to her, and they're talking. He was talking about how with that two pounds of weed they're gonna get it to try to sell it and that's how he was gonna get her a ring I forgot to mention that he she asked about a ring in the truck in the van yeah. and you know help their future and all that stuff you know that bullshit story he, he, lying. he was getting that to get high as shit yeah but uh they eventually did no they drive they drive to the gas station yeah now to a local barbecue gas station that's and that's when Michael was like Psh, sign me up or some shit he was all for it. Yeah. Sounded good. A gas station and a barbecue pit. I'm hungry. So Let's they go. go there. And there's a... I don't know her name. I don't remember the names of every character. In them, but the older lady that was in the gas station. They go in there. They ask... This is the uh, right. sheriff's mom. Sheriff's mom or wife? Either. His mom. Okay. I don't know her name either. And but they... Go ahead. She's the host of the gas station, right? Yeah. Yep. And she, first of all, they report to her. They tell her that somebody just committed suicide in the back of her van, and she requests two cents just to make a phone call. <laughs> I said, that's, you're right about that, because I asked about the phone. I'll say this, though. That's a cheap fucking phone call. Two pennies ain't shit. But, yeah, I mean, like, but I mean, in a dramatic bitch, situation. I just told you somebody shot themselves in my van. The first thing you think about is them two pennies. Like, come on now. No expression on her face whatsoever. Of, nah. Oh shit! Somebody just killed himself. Yo, like her. I, oh man, we should have. We should have took quotes from this movie. But like her facial expression, whatever she said, like the way she said it was like this shit happens all the fucking time. All two people that come in here and visit, someone kills herself. Yeah. But you know, you later learn that who she is, and you understand why. But they called the sheriff's office. They never. The funny thing was when they called whatever they called, they never showed you the other end of the phone. You know, like a lot of movies, they show you the other end of the phone or at least let you hear the call. Mm-hmm. They were just, I believe she was talking to some lady and then that was like it. The sheriff wasn't, oh, somebody, did the lady say this? The one that was in the gas station or was it somebody on the phone? Because this is what has me a little, it just hit me. When uh, they're asking about the sheriff and she said, uh, he's probably out somewhere getting drunk. No, the little boy says it. The little boy, oh. That's later. Damn. 
Okay, so I know that she tells them to go <coughs> to. She tells them to go somewhere. Pretty much she to the house. Tells them to go to like the old mill or sawmill. The old, old mill. Saw mill. Old mill, and they drive there with the body in the car still. Yeah, she tells them to keep the dead body. And I imagine this in today's society. Okay, <laughs> you got a dead body with blood smeared all over the back of your uh, back window, and a big bullet hole in there, mm-hmm. and just drive to the other side of town and wait for him. He'll be there in a half hour, he says. Yeah, that's. That's sketchy. To or if right you want to sit here, you got to wait two hours. That's real fucking sketchy. That right there should tell you something. It should, but they went along and they fucking, they went to the mill and, go. Oh. So they get to the mill. They discover a shadow running in part of the building in the mill. Oh, yeah, when they get there and park and everything. And they discover a killer possum. That's right. They seen the possum. They open up the locker, see the possum, everybody started screaming. <laughs> and I remember not too long after this part, they go, it was Aaron and Kemper. They were walking and talking or whatever, I believe. And they go into the house. They go up to the house. There's an the old dude in the wheelchair. Well, with no, the before you get to there, that's when they meet the little kid. Jedediah. Jedediah. A.K.A. Billy. Yeah. <laughs> and he... Yeah, because he was like, they see that he was like kind of in the dark. He was yeah, under after something. After they found the killer possum is when he banged around in there on the lower level. Mm-hmm. So then they walk over to him and uh, he promises them to, pro- or he asks them to promise not to hurt him. Yeah, they say they're not going to hurt him. And he's yeah. a dirty little kid, buck teeth and all that. His family's fucking nuts. But uh, he ends up being a good kid, though. He ends up being a hero. We'll get into that in a little bit, though. So then, so as you were saying, uh, Aaron and what's her boyfriend's name? Kemper. Kemper, walk over to uh, the house, the family house. Yeah, and the old dude in the wheelchair, which I don't fucking know his name. So, <coughs> I don't think me. they say his name once in this movie. So we're just gonna call him old dude in the wheelchair. He wouldn't let Kemper come in the house. Remember? He said she can come because they, you know, they get there, knock on the door, or whatever. That's so they can use the phone. He said, "Yeah, she." I said she can come in and use the phone, but you can't. Mm-hmm. So she goes in, and at this point, doesn't she get a hold of somebody when she calls? I for, like I kind of forget. She does, and they tell her a half hour. Okay. Again. And as she's still inside. Oh, that's what happens. That's right. The old dude throws us. You don't see what he does, but it pretty yeah, much throws us out the window. over to the room because he's screaming for help. So she's trying to lift him up, but he's he's dead and down all his weight, so she can't. Yep. So then you, saw, you see her try to help him again, and he's grabbing all on her ass and shit and trying to, like, pretend to be pulling up and copping feels. Mm-hmm. And then she hears, or this is when Kemper comes back in the house, or comes into the house. And he's snooping around. Uh, Mm -hmm. Finds his way to a doorway where he opens it up because he knocks something off of the door. Like a necklace or something. I don't know if it was like a necklace with teeth on it. He knocks something over. And there's a cartoon, an old-ass cartoon on in the background with a cat or something on it. There was Mm -hmm. music playing and shit. And you knew something was going to happen. Like, he knocks the thing over. He looks down. He gets on the ground. He grabs it. It shows the cartoon again. And then it pans back over to Kemper, and you see Leatherface behind him with a hammer or whatever, and just smashes on the back of his head, and then it goes back to the TV, and you see the cat, and, like, blood splatter on the TV, and you see the cat, like, opening its mouth, and the drums are banging or something. Mm-hmm. And then that scene ends, which was a fucking pretty awesome scene, too. And that's when he, Thomas, drags uh, Kemper. Kemper into his dungeon. Down in the basement. And as he slams the door, that's when... Uh, Aaron... Aaron stops helping wheelchair guy and just drops him and then she walks back to her friends. Yeah. Then they were in Meanwhile, the- Sheriff gets to her friends, right? Does he get there first? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sheriff as as all that's going on, they're not it goes to the scene where the sheriff just gets there, he's going to her friends and he uh he gets there, he talks about the dead body or whatever with them. And he has Andy and Morgan help him get the dead body out of it. 
yeah. out of the car. Mm-hmm. So they go in there, they grab her. And he's just talking so much shit to them. <laughs> I forgot what he was fucking saying exactly. He's just talking so much shit. About being, remember he told him to respect the dead body and shit and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's how he goes. What are you boys doing with her? She's a little wet down here. <laughs> that's right. And he gave him, he gave him some saran wrap to like wrap her whole body up with, right? So they take her out the van, and mind you, he just yelled at them, you know, be respectful to the dead body and all this other shit. So they go, he wants them to put him in the cop, his cop car, so they go to put him in the car, and they go to put him in the back seat. He's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Don't put that nasty shit in there. <laughs> He's like, put it in the fucking trunk, and don't get it on my, don't steal my stuff either or something, but I was dying. Yeah. And that guy was another fucking, to me, he was like another comic relief. He was just fucking brutal, but he was funny at the same fucking time. He yeah. just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Probably one of my favorite characters. I was going to say the same thing. He might have been one of my favorite characters in the whole movie. Yeah, I think he was one of them. So, that's when he pulls off. That's when he pulls off after that. With the body, yeah. With the body. And Aaron comes back <laughs> without Kemper. She does. And it has to be like a little bit, like a few minutes later, a little while later. Yeah. Because she comes back to the van. Wait a minute. Hang on. When does um Andy go inside the house? Not yet. Okay, so she comes so back she to the... She comes back. There's... No, no, she didn't go back to the van. She was like running in the woods because she ran out the house and ran no, in the no, woods. No, 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 This is later on after she goes back with Andy. You're thinking of. Right now, she's just walking through the woods yelling for Kemper. Okay, that's right. And she makes her way back to the van. Oh, I'm trying to... I'm getting parts mixed up now. So she gets to the van, mm-hmm. and then she asks them have they seen Kemper. And they go, no, he was with you. So then they, like, take a little walk that, they and go then for like looking for Kemper. Now they're at the point where they go over to, like, where those cars are, there's a, yeah, there's abandoned cars in the movie. They, like, walk off. In the, there's, a, there's a lot of land in this place. They walk off somewhere. There's a few abandoned cars. One's got a horn blowing on it. So, so they pull the stick out with the horn blowing on it. And Andy finds teeth on the ground. Yeah, he does. And he, like, And they them. also find... A jar. Morgan finds a jar. And in that jar is a picture of the suicide girl and, and her family. Yeah, it's like a picture of her by herself. And then you turn the jar around. There's some fucking liquid in there. I don't know what it was. And it showed her, like, her family. And they were like, this is the girl from the, from the van. Uh-huh. And after that, is that when those two go in the house? Yeah, that's when they, so that's when they decide as a group, do we leave now or do we go back and look? That's right, because... Two are... They're split. Morgan and... Who asked for the keys? Morgan. Morgan asked for the keys. Aaron gave him the keys to the van, because they were talking about leaving. She said she's not going to leave without Kemper. Mm -hmm. So, eventually, after a little two-minute argument, or if it was even that long, is done, they decide to stay to find Kemper. Pepper and Morgan go back to the van... And then Aaron and Andy go into the house to look for, for uh, Kemper. Gotcha. And at that point, was the old guy back in his wheelchair? He yeah, was, yeah he was. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was because he was back in his wheelchair like before she left. Okay, so they go back in the house, and the other two are in the van because it kind of kept going back and forth with them talking and stuff, right? Yeah. I'm trying to piece it together. They were debating. They were debating who was going to keep the keys. Yeah, they did that. And then that's when her and Aaron and Andy decided they were going to go back to the house. She was going to distract the wheelchair guy while that's he right. snuck in and looked. And My he... question for you is, so you're on a road trip, right? Oh, gosh. It's you, your wife, Henry Serene, and a random fifth wheel. You? For the sake of argument, it's me. <laughs> okay. So... You and Francis go off to the house to call the cops. She makes the call. You decide to wander in upstairs. Mm-hmm. You knock something off a door knowing you're clumsy ass. 
So you try to put it back up, boom, hammer, take it back. I'm done. She doesn't know yet, so she goes back to where we're at. At what point do we decide it's cool to... Aaron's gone, man. Do, you know what I mean? Now it's... Like, we Look at all the facts we've discovered. The suicide girl, she was around here. We, we're seeing teeth on the ground. Mm-hmm. <coughs> the cop was just the dickhead through a, a, a dead, dead body, body in just trunk. in his trunk. And he wasn't, like, uh, compassionate or nothing at all. No, he just didn't give a fuck. Nobody in this town, in fact, is compassionate. Um, at what point... Do you leave? No, at what point would it be... Would, it, would you be mad at your wife at that point and all of us? For, we can't find you. Is it cool if we leave? Well, <laughs> as seeing as how what we know... And if you're placing just from all those facts we just named, we don't know that there's a f- serial killer family in that house yet. But we you don't know, know any of that. You have but to have you a got, feeling. Yeah, you have something's a feeling going, something's fucked up around here. I would say you have to. It's tough though. It's tough because I, I like I would say if it's me, fuck it, go ahead and leave. But then you're like if it's someone else because you want to be make sure your other people are okay. You're like yeah. At what po- all right, so you can you can switch positions in this debate as well. At what point do, we do you looking? say, "All right, guys, I'm fucked. You guys leave and get away safe." And at what point do you say, "All right, he's fucked. We're leaving him here. Let's go." Okay, let's start with this. If as far as like saying I'm fucked, they don't really know that yet, though. This they just true. think you're lost somewhere. So it's I'm, like, I'm asking from your perspective, if they did leave, at what point would you be like, yo, that's fucked up. They left me like that. It's tough. I mean, like, if I survive, I'd be mad as shit. Like, what the fuck? These motherfuckers done left me here. <coughs> and I'm still alive. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then it's at the other side of the coin. It's like, you know what? They should get out of here so someone can go. Maybe these guys can go get help. Like mm-hmm. real help, so mm-hmm. I would say, if you can't, like, if we get split up like that, group up and go and go get help. Don't wait around and see what the hell's gonna happen because you end up dead, like Kemper. Yeah. Now let me flip this around and ask you the same question, but first I'll say this. Actually, I'll answer your other part of your question because this one's a tougher. This one's tougher because it's putting you in the as Asshole abandoning position. your friend yeah. in a sense. I would have to say, I don't know, honestly. Like, you want to look? Maybe. All right, here's what I'm probably. Here's what I'm thinking. All right, right so now. Let, you also what have to you, go listen to perspective. What if I'm if like, I, okay, if I leave you, I'm leaving your wife too because she's not going to leave without you. you know, At what point? If you're the other three people, Andy. Uh, Morgan Morgan and, and Pepper Pepper At what point do you Snuff his girlfriend And take the keys And get the fuck out of there uh, The fuck you And your boyfriend You ain't rolling with us bitch Alright you can stay here With him Yeah Or Because this is life or death Yeah And with that situation I would you say You ain't no giving one, me the keys And I'm taking them Knock her out And just take her with you Okay You get what I'm saying Yeah like Because you're mess- making The wiser decision Because she doesn't have the She's her brain. Her heart won't allow her brain to make the right decision. Exactly. So it's like, but at the same time, because that's your boy, yeah. like that's your brother. So it's like, at what point, like you were saying, at what point do you leave? Like you have to just. All right. So as my brother, right? If we end up in Texas, and we pick up this suicide, if bitch we who end blows up in our this brain situation. out in the back of my van. And then and we keep going. And then we keep going, and we stop. And then we see all this shit that's just trans- transpired. Mm-hmm. As my boy, you're going to this house because your girlfriend wants to uh, call, call the cops and do all this the right way. When you see what's going down here, well, then if you're following along because just because your girlfriend's going to be mad at you, well, I'm sorry. That, hey. I get what you're saying right hey, there. That's, but that's your choice. Kind of both the girls were in on that. So it's like, would you leave your girl behind? You see what I'm saying? I mean... And then your friends? But I mean, that's why... How, what, how irrational this girl's being? That's really you rational. You kind of got... She's being rational? No, that's really rational. Yeah, she's being very irrational at this point. At this point, I have to be the asshole boyfriend and put her in check and we're doing 
what I'm saying or then I have to go on without you. You're, what you're going to have to do in that situation is yoke them up because they're not going to yeah. just go willingly. But we can even jump back to when the girl sh- – first of all – when Before you even stop for the – this goes the, to what you were saying, stopping yeah, for the hostage. I wouldn't the, even stop you know and pick I mean. her up. Yeah. And then say you did do that and she shoots herself. Fuck that. Drop the body. After, say you try to do it. You right can't there. really do that, though, in all honesty. Because yeah, if but, you get pulled, you got that <coughs> fucking bullet hole in the back of your car. Bust out the rest of the window. Put a bag True. over it. But, but then I'm you saying, still got blood stain all over your shit. Yeah, I don't really know about all that. But I'm saying, though, right? Say you do pick her up. I know we're jumping around in this movie, but so we have to. <laughs> you pick her up. She shoots herself. You go to the gas station thing. You call the police. You're doing the right thing, but they're like, it's going to take two hours. Okay. Now, at that point, it's like, you know what? Me, I'm thinking, you because know, I think this came up again. We should just drop the body. I'm not sure. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just leave the body here and get the fuck out of here. We'll call the cops when we get to a safer, because I don't know what the fuck's going on right here. Like, that right there would freak well, me the fuck out. Well, they didn't have cell phones for some reason. The, all the well, no, no, no. Back in the this 70s. one's from the 74. Yeah. It was just 03 Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre. But, I mean, after you make that phone call... And you're driving in a dead ass town like that? It's was there no nine one one in seventy four? I'm sure there was. Because why is she calling a seven digit number? <laughs> because call? like you could do that even like around here to get your local police, you'd call a seven digit number. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And you figure way back then too, like with the small town, you just have like the sheriff, yeah. a small you know, a small little force. So, I mean, if we're gonna think like this, like how you'd really think, unmovieish, I guess. Because, you know, we're thinking, but making sense. Mm-hmm. Like I said, first of all, I would pick the hitchhiker, hitchhiker up. Yeah, but like we said, but this like was, I said, say it was one year. But then again. say it's a guy driving who's easily manipulated by his girlfriend. He does what she but says. But then again, if you look back, I'm sure back in those days people did hitch. Well, she wasn't even a hitchhiker because she wasn't she looking wasn't for a ask, ride. Yeah, yeah. So this is more or less so, your girlfriend demanding to stop so she can make sure the girls are all right. So they kind of, I mean. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. The girls did it. They did. They said, we'll bring you to wherever you want to go. Come on, come with us. True, true. I was going to say, they kind of kidnapped her, but you did say that part. It was like, she's kind of weak-minded. You kind of, you know. Yeah, but she, it's not like they pulled her. They yeah. just, like, kind of directed They're trying to be her, helper. and she helper. went along, along with direction. So, yeah, yeah, you got a point. But I was going to say, if you go for that situation, I'm not picking her up. And if we did pick her up and she shoots herself, fuck it, I'm dropping the body. And I'll say this, <coughs> yes, to be funny, and yes, because I'm thinking, you know, look, I'm black, Henry's black, Francis is Spanish, you and Serena are going to do white alibis mm. if you're in the car with us, but who's going to believe that some random girl got in your van and just killed herself? Yes, they could check the yeah, but all even that shit. yeah, but even so, you did dump the body. Now you have you're riding around in this dirty van in the middle of the fucking country. It's only you on the road. Good point. Good point. It's not like you're gonna get too far. Well, fuck so it. you have to do things the right. You way. had, I mean, you had, yeah. But I mean, again, if we want to go like, I mean, this, if you pick up somebody and they kill themselves, why wouldn't you call it police and have them deal with it? Because otherwise, you look guilty anyway. True. If it ever does get traced back to true. But Especially if you didn't do anything in this it's situation. It's just that freaky ass town, though. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. You know what it is, but though? They didn't know that yet. That's what, that's what I'm saying, too. We're speaking it as. As if we. As if you as knew if everything going into this, because we know everything. But no, at, at, at which point I'm asking you, do you when, just say when do I say go? fuck it and go? We already know all this, though, because we've true. seen the girl kill herself. We've seen the cop just say, true, don't true. put that dirty body in the back of my shit. True. Put it in the trunk. <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? I would, why is she what? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Obviously, it's a town full of scumbags. I think that's going to be the, why is she what? There you I go. I forgot the exact quote, but. Uh, um. So going back to the question then, as far as like, when do you leave your friends or your friend or whatever? Mm-hmm. Because at the same time, I guess you got to think of it like we have to survive and you have to protect the girls. So it's like, okay. Maybe we try to stay together as a group. This is what should have been. Look real quick. And if we can't find them, we got to go. If we're if there's going to be somebody to stay around and help and look, then I say one of the men stays, does the looking around for Kemper, and then one man goes with the two girls, 
and goes off to get fucking help somewhere else and bring it back. I can agree with that. Or, well, yeah, because just in case something happens on the way to get help, you got one of the dudes there. Yeah. But my my next question is, because the gun was, no, the cop actually came, when they took the body, the cop came and took the gun. So my next thing is, going into this, you're saying, you know, one guy stays. Now, which guy stays? And I'm asking this. The, the, here's the, hear me out. Um, Andy was the guy that was left, mm-hmm. and it was Morgan. Andy's more of an athletic build. You'd think he'd be someone who can, you know, protect the girls better or defend himself if he has to as far as looking around. So it's like, who do you decide stays and goes in that situation? Like, does he stay? And protect the girls because it's his girlfriend and his friend's girlfriend? Or does he go... They're all friends. Or does he go and look for his boy? Or do you send Morgan to go look for his boy? You could make the argument Andy goes because one of of the girls is his girlfriend. But she's... Or you could make the argument... The same argument that he stays in the car. You know what I mean? He stays and drives off to go get help. Mm -hmm. And Morgan stays. Or, honestly, why not all go and get help? And try to come back as a group with the police, with the real police, probably from like fucking sixteen towns over, but with the real police, and you know. Because at that point, you what if your friend is it's, looking for you and you're nowhere to be found? You know what I mean. True, but so see, that's why you gotta leave leave one somebody person around who has the because there's no cell phones, no way of communication. So you leave somebody with a game plan. Okay. We're going to go here. If we can't find help by such and such, we'll come back this way anyway come back and, and get come you. get you at such and such location. That's, the, that was a, that's another thing. It's like the person has to go and look around, and it seems like they should have a location where you can hide and all that shit, but those people know their whole fucking land. Yeah. So we get back. We can get, jump back into the movie now. Um, we know Kemper's dead. Aaron Andy go t- in the house, you know, to look for Kemper. Mm-hmm. And the, to, the old dude was, he had a cane or no, something. No, because okay. uh, Aaron walks up to the old guy. He's outside in his garden mm-hmm. to distract him so that Andy can sneak in the house and look around for Kemper. So she's got him distracted and Andy's looking around and he makes it to the back room and ends up knocking something off the refrigerator, which makes a big bang. And the old guy notices, so... He goes back in the house. Yeah. Okay. How the fuck did he get up them stairs? They must have had a ramp somewhere. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, so he mysteriously floats up the stairs. That's a good question. Wait, was he even outside? Or was yeah, he, like in the he front was room? in the garden. Shit. That's crazy. Because she was like, oh, what a nice garden you have here. I remember that as just as Andy was sneaking in. But they weren't on the like on the front or back porch either, though, right? No, they were right <laughs> out. They were right in the grass, like off of the porch. Maybe there there had to be a ramp somewhere. I don't know. Or maybe he can walk. Because no, he has stubs his legs. His legs are cut off. Maybe he walked on his hands. And pulled his wheelchair. She pulled it up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a good question, though. I never even, like, when we were watching the movie, I didn't even think to, like, really pay too much attention to it because so much shit's going, that's when shit's really starting to go yeah. down again. Yeah. So anyway, they get back in the house, and, uh... Oh, so yeah, so they get back in the house. He She runs in the house, actually, to see what, if he's okay or what's going on. And then they're walking out, and he's mysteriously up the stairs. And he goes, what are you guys doing in my house? I told you he's not in my house, but you're so dead and you don't even know it or yep. something and then he's fucking banging, banging with on, the his floor, cane with a cane on the floor with a cane on the floor all of a sudden Thomas opens up those back doors well and, first when he's doing that you hear it shows like, like the floorboard moving from downstairs like dust shaking off uh-huh. and I, did they show Thomas down there which did and for those of you who don't know Thomas that's Leatherface his, actually I can tell you his name is Thomas Brown Hewlett but anyways, like I was saying, did they show like a quick pan of him downstairs, like grabbing his chainsaw and coming up, and then maybe I don't know, though. kind of coming upstairs. But they had, like when he when he did eventually get upstairs, though he had there was that wall. Cause remember, he, like the door was like a wall, mm-hmm. he slid the door across, 
comes up and uh, fucking has a chainsaw going. And Andy and fucking Aaron get scared. Well, obviously they get scared and fucking start running and shit. But Andy falls. Or no, no, no. When they're getting ready to run out the house because he tells Aaron to run, she runs out the front door. They the, both do. No. At first, Andy gets tripped by the old dude. Oh, that's right. Because then right. he picked up the... Because he's fighting for the wrench. He grabs the star reason. wrench. Yeah. That you don't have to change the tire with, which is... In, don't let me forget about the star wrench thing. I'm going to tell you why. Um, so he picks that up with Leatherface trying to cut him. And he keeps blocking him with the star wrench. Yeah. And I don't know if he hits Leatherface or what he does to get out, but he gets out the house. He runs out the door, and he's, like, running into the sheets, and there's sheets hanging up. Yeah, through the field. And he keeps running through the sheets, running through the sheets. There's dirt and Leatherface is chasing him with the chainsaw. <laughs> and somehow Leatherface gets on, like, the side of him or in front of him and cuts off his foot. Yeah, cuts and, right out his knee. Yep. Yokes the body up. Brings it into the house, brings it into the basement. And he, there's, like, he's they're butchers. It. So that's why it's all set up like that. You know, they hang, he hangs them up through his back on that hook. And then that stuff, I want to say it's some sort of salt. Yeah. That he puts on his leg, that yeah. like that he cut off to stop the bleeding. And it like also, um, so the meat won't rot. Uh-huh. So he slaps that on his leg. And Aaron just, this is the part that I thought happened earlier. She just, when she left, she took off, ran in the woods. She was just running, running, running. Yeah. And she eventually gets back to the van. Yeah. Tries to start the fan, the fan won't fucking start, of course, as it happens to every other horror movie. Yeah. And, you know, that goes on for a couple of minutes or whatever. Probably about what, five minutes, if that. No. Movie time, maybe five to ten minutes. Actual, like, as far as, like, in the actual movie, not. But it was probably, like, a two-minute scene. I don't know where you hear, a, like, a bang on the window and the cops knocking on the window. Yeah, yeah. And they all jump. So, you know, she opens the door or whatever and she's talking about, she's trying to get the words out. That somebody's dying. That somebody's dying. And the cop has no <laughs> he don't cares shit. in the world about <clears throat> anybody that's dying. So he tells her to calm down, shut up. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Take a deep breath. And uh, all of a sudden he looks on her dashboard and finds half of a smoked joint. <laughs> that was hilarious. So he makes a scene out of that. He did. He, 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 tell me he makes them all get out of the car. Lay face down in the ground. Well, first, he grabbed it. He was like, who's this? Is this yours? You guys doing drugs? This, that, and third. And like, no, no, it's not mine. I don't smoke. It's not my van. So he grabs that. I don't know if he throws it or what. But then he makes them all get out of the van. Get the fuck out the van and get on the ground now. Like, this isn't no, you know, come on, get out the van. Let's talk about this. No, get the fuck out the van. Come on. So he has, at this point, I'm sorry I forgot to mention, it's Pepper Morgan and um, Aaron in the van. So he makes they all get out. He makes them all lay on the ground. And he's just still, he's still questioning Aaron as to what's going on. She's like, somebody's dying. And she goes to stand up and he pushes her on the ground. And she's like, somebody's dying, somebody's dying. And she knows she's going on with that. And he's like, oh, finally we're getting somewhere. And then she tries to get up again. He starts shooting at the ground. Remember that, like right in front of her. And Pepper's crying. Morgan's yelling or whatever, screaming. They're all screaming. And after that, at some point, the guy, the cop goes over to, the sheriff, sorry, goes over to Morgan, makes him stand up. And this is when shit gets funny again. Mm -hmm. Because he makes him stand up, tells him, you know, asking him what happened. But he's like, come on, show me what the girl did. The girl that killed herself, suicide girl. So, uh... He has him sit in the van. And in, the, in the exact same spot that she was sitting in. Well, at first, though, he was like, hang on a second. He was like, because he sat like right next to where she was sitting. Because yeah. where the bullet hole was in the back. He was like, now, um, the angle that, you know, she shot herself, there's no way in hell that the bullet could have went out the window like that. He's like, move over and sit. And he was like, but she died there. There's blood there. He was like, what, are you afraid of a little blood? He's like, move the fuck over. <laughs> And so you see him, like, moving, you know, I guess it's supposed to be, like, part of her brains or her head or whatever. Kind of pushing that over to the side a little bit. Mm -hmm. Morgan. He sits in the same spot. So then the cops goes, and then what'd she do? He's like, then she shot herself. So he's like, okay. So the cop pulls out out a gun. 
And at this point, the very first time I seen it, I honestly thought the cop was just going to shoot him mm-hmm. or beat him in the teeth or whatever with it. But instead, he gives the guy, he gives Morgan the gun, and he's like, "So what did she do next?" And then he said he shot herself, and he put the, he's like, "Show me what she did." So what Morgan did was he put the gun under his chin, and the cop was like, "Okay, now there's no hole in the bottom of her mouth, <laughs> so that's not where the gun was." And Kemp, Mor- sorry, not Kemper, Morgan's like kind of shaking, stops coming out of his nose, he's, he's upset and he's fucking scared. So uh, he. Uh, Eventually, the cops like you know put the gun in your mouth, sheriff. I keep forgetting. Put the gun in your mouth. So the guy, you know, he puts the Morgan puts the gun in his mouth, and he's like, "So what happened next?" And he's like, and he said, "With well, the gun's gone." Then she shot herself. So then he told him to pull. He's like, "Well, I've so never seen a gun go of off." Imagination. Yeah, I don't have much of imagination. I've never seen a gun go off without pulling the trigger. <laughs> so then, at this point, Morgan pulls the gun out of his mouth and points it at the cop, and he's yelling at him, saying, "You get on the ground, motherfucker." And you know, spitting all this shit. He's real sweating, like real fucking pump. His adrenaline's going. He's you thinking like, oh shit, shit's about to get fucking real. Morgan's about to be a fucking hero and save the day. And uh, so uh, you know, he's yelling and at. And at this time, the two girls, Pepper and Aaron, telling them not to shoot the cops. Well, they no, they stand up at first. They get up to see what's going on. Yeah. Aaron's the one telling them not to shoot the cops. Like you know, stop, put the gun down, blah 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 blah. But Morgan's like, shoot the mo- or sorry, Pepper's like, shoot the motherfucker, shoot him. And so, remember, he pulls the trigger. And there's no, no bullet bullets. The cop gave him a different gun. So then, in that same instance, he made Morgan get out the car again. And Morgan, he put Morgan in the cop car with him. Uh-huh. In the back seat. <clears throat> the girls, he made, they stayed there. So then he's driving off with, he's driving off with Morgan, and they're talking. You know, and <laughs> this is another funny part. And they, this is where you find out, if I'm not mistaken, this is where you find out where they're going to a, that they're going to a Skinner concert because they did mention a concert, but they don't think they mentioned who earlier in the movie. Yeah. And the cops like, you know, so where are you guys going? Da da da. What were you doing? It's like we're going to we're, we're going to a Skinner Skinner concert. And the cops like, oh, well, me and you got something in common. And talking about how you like Skinner. And uh, so the cop was like, so what are you gonna do with the tickets? <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying cop. But whatever. And he's like, you can have them if you want them. He's like, oh, so you're bribing me now? And I forgot to mention, he was drinking as he was driving. <laughs> the the Gosh, sheriff was drinking as he was driving. Drinking. And it's a, out of a glass bottle, he just reaches his hand, grabs the bottle, smacks Morgan in the face. And Morgan Smashes glass all over his face. Yep. And he knocks his teeth out. Knocks some teeth out, and he's spitting out blood and stuff. Knocked his glasses off. <laughs> so... The cop starts laughing. He's like, oh, me and you were just alike. And he pulls out, like, four false teeth in the front. The four, <laughs> And, oh, my God, that was hilarious. We popped. He's like, we got something else to come. And popped those back in his teeth. And, you know, it just showed him driving off. Toward, he was going towards the house, right? Yeah. And it went back to the girls at this point? Or did it? Uh, well, what did they do? They, they tried to leave in the van. That's right. So she finally hot wires the van. Aaron, yeah. Oh, that's right. She was trying to hot wire the van. I remember how Pepper was shaking. She's like, Pepper, can you be still so yeah, I can do yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gets a hot wire. The van starts, and you're thinking, these yeah. girls are about to go get help. These, they're gone. But nope. She puts that's the van in drive. And then, like, the front left tire falls off, right? It showed the front left one and the front. Like, all the wheels end up coming off the van. Uh, now, I remember the, the wrench I was telling you about? Yeah. You use those to take the wheels off of vehicles. That's why that's important. Uh, and that's the scene where, what you call it, blocking himself from getting cut, where uh-huh. Andy's blocking himself from getting cut. And, I like, when I first, when I, we were watching the movie just now, we just watched the movie, and yes, we forgot quite a few things. <laughs> Anyways, when we were watching the movie, I seen it, and then, you know, you get in the van, they drive off. I'm like, okay, I got to remember that. Remember I said it during the movie, like, I got to remember that part mm-hmm. with the star wrench. Or shit, I said that during the podcast. Never mind. So yeah, that that right there, it's one of those little scenes that I like in movies, which I'll just stick it to this one. But ends up being kind of like it's a little thing when you see it in the movie when he's blocking himself with it. You're like, oh, he's just blocking himself with something. But then when you see the wheels come off, you're like, okay, so that's cool how the wheels came off and they actually used the tool, you know, yeah. to do it. It didn't show it. So you want to go from? 
hyped after that. So then Leatherface comes out of nowhere and That's right. starts uh, his chainsaw chainsawing the fuck out of their van. Because he cut out the back window first. Yeah. And then he's on top of the van and he's no, cutting. Before that, the driver's side door where Aaron was. Because remember, they, the two oh, girls. moved to the back. And he went like, from the back to the. Yeah, they jumped to the back and then he got on top. Yeah. Started cutting through the fucking the roof. Yeah. And then the door was the door already open, the back side door? Did they open it or did he open it? Because uh, th- maybe they opened it and tried to run out. That's what it was. I think Aaron tried to run out first. Mm-hmm. And um, Leatherface grabbed her by her hair. So Pepper, she was telling Pepper to run. So Pepper gets out and tries to run. And Leatherface lets Aaron go. He like throws her down or something, lets her go. And he jumps down off the van and chases Pepper. And she falls, of course. And he chainsaws her. Right? He cuts her. Yeah, because it didn't show her, like, cutting her up. Yeah. But it just, like, showed him, like, holding the chainsaw and, like, holding over or whatever, kind mm-hmm. of, from behind. Yeah. And Aaron's in the van screaming and crying. She gets out and runs, and she ends up running to another, tr- to a trailer. Yeah. One trailer out there, out of nowhere, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. <laughs> and nobody answers at first. So she turns around, and they open the door, and she, like, jumps. Yeah. And they, you know, she goes inside. They bring her in. She goes in, slams the door, and she goes, "Why do you have that teapot on? He's gonna hear us." Oh yeah, turn phone. that off. Turn it off. And so they turn the tea kettle off, and it goes back outside, and you hear leather. You hear Leatherface. I can't remember if you really see him or not, but yeah, I don't you hear see him. him, and I think he, he knows she's in there, so he turns his chainsaw off. Yeah, and he knows the, you know, he knows who they are. Mm-hmm. So he turns his chainsaw off and he just kind of goes and does whatever he does. And then it goes back into the little house, the little trailer. And uh, she's asking for a phone. They said they didn't have one. They said they didn't have one. But before you get to what you're about to say, they were kind of talking to her, saying how he's going to hear her or whatever. And they were like, he, he knows better than to come here. He's not going to mess with us. Remember that part? Mm-hmm. And then not too long after, I think the phone rings, right? Cause they're making her. She or no. no, she yells and wakes the baby up because the uh, short-haired woman is trying to force feed her the tea. The tea, yeah, that's right. And and she ends because she's like, you don't take the calm you down. She ends up drinking it. Yeah. And then after she starts drinking the tea, a little bit after that is when she hears the phone ring. Mm-hmm. So she goes in there. She's like, I thought you said well, you. Well, before before that though, she discovers a picture next to the other woman. And oh, the picture is a picture of uh, the family of the suicide girl. And then that's her baby. Yeah. I forgot all about that, that part. She had a baby recently, which I know they kind of cut out a lot of details. Maybe that that's shit. why her legs were bloody. But I, like, I'm just putting this together right now. That's crazy. But the crazy thing, nah, I mean. because the kid is kind of grown. He's not grown, but he's still like a baby. But. That, I mean, at the time, well, no. He like 20 pounds, bro. I'm just saying, though, but it had to, because where she was bleeding at, I don't, they never really, it's, yeah. it's, it's not realistic in a sense, but it's possible as far as the movie goes. Yeah. But the, how recently, I don't know. Anyways, going back to that, so she hears the phone ringing. After this, is, the baby's crying as the phone's ringing, I believe. Mm-hmm. She goes in there. She said, that's not your baby. First, she said, I thought you didn't have a phone. And I don't remember what the girl really said. I think she was off the phone at that point. Then she said, that's not your baby. And Billy's sister just kind of looked up at Aaron and just yeah. Jedediah's sister. I'm guessing that's his sister because they kind of look alike from the movie. Mm-hmm. She didn't really say anything. Though. She's, or she said, yes, this is my baby. Oh, yeah. She said something like that. And, like, as she's saying that, and she's going to walk into the other room, she just passes out. <coughs> Excuse me. Aaron passes out from the tea. That's right. And then she wakes up in the Hewitt household, right? In the basement. Because and she sees... No, Ann. wait. Wait, no, no, no. She woke up, and the sheriff was, like, petting her, kind of. Remember? He, he didn't yes, 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 yes. Sit- he was sitting on the couch. She was, like, on the floor. Yeah. In between his legs, kind of. Yeah. And the family was in there kind of talking and stuff. And then they called, uh, didn't they call Thomas up? Yeah. And he brought her downstairs? Or what happened? 
Yeah, he did bring her downstairs. Cause she, Andy. did she run? Oh, fuck, man. No, I know he put her downstairs, and that's when she discovers Andy hanging up, and then she like stabs that. him. Well, first she tries to get him off the hooks, yeah, and he's like screaming in pain and stuff. Yeah, and he, and he, he points out a knife to her and says, "Listen, you you got to stab me. You got to kill me." Yeah. And she wouldn't do it at first, of course, but she eventually did it. Stabbed him right in the stomach, which was another cool. You see a lot of blood coming out on her arms and on her face and stuff. Mm-hmm. And from that point, she goes, she tries to get out of there. And she's like, trip, she's bumping into shit, right? Yeah. Is that what it was? She's bumping no, into shit? No, no, not even. Trip, she's trip, just trip. looking around again after that, but she's like a mess. And she comes across Morgan in a pool in like of a blood. Tub. He's like a in a tub. A tub of blood, it looked like. No, he wasn't in a tub of blood. He, I think he was just like in a tub. Because, uh, I don't know. Because there was like no blood on him when she put him, when she pulled him out of the water. Yeah. And. Not too long after that. So there, she pulls him out, and then the little kid, uh, Jedediah. Jedediah, sees her and, like, directs her out with Morgan. But Leatherface comes down. But Leatherface is coming down as him. they're escaping. And she gets, like, half, she gets Morgan, Morgan gets out, out first. Yeah, because his arm. oh, that's what we forgot, too. His arms were tied. Like, yeah. his arms were, like, high, handcuffs were tied together. So he couldn't really do too much. He just had his legs to run with. Yeah. So, so she helps him up the out of the basement from, you know, like, the basements that go outside, those type of doors. She helps him up that. And she's <laughs> crawling up the steps. And then classic horror movie where she gets to, like, the last step, and he grabs her leg, and they rustle and tussle, and then she kicks him. No, but... What happens is the way she got away, Bucktooth Billy comes up oh, and bites, right. he bit, bites her arm. Or bites, or bites sorry, arm. bites Leatherface's arm. Yeah. And that and he like grabs his arm, then he like pushes it back and knocks him and knocks him down. Mm-hmm. And she runs. Her and Morgan run. Run around. They get to like this uh I don't know what the hell it was. Maybe it was like a rundown barn or whatever. She hides him first, and then she hides herself. And of course, Leatherface gets in there. Leatherface gets in there. They're looking around. At first, they try to hold him off of the couch. Remember? Because he gets in. They go in the thing, and then they go in the little cabin, barn, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and they close the door and sit in front of the door with the couch, and then he starts chainsawing at the door. So that's when they go in the back and hide. Yeah. And she puts uh, Morgan in the closet. And she sits in like another some, closet, another or something. little closet looking thing, and then there's like a little hole in the wall. She keeps looking through. Yeah, Leatherface eventually makes his way back there, and uh, mice crawl up her or something and squeak. Those rats squeak, and he looks over to where she is, mm-hmm. but he doesn't. He doesn't go. In, <coughs> excuse me. He doesn't go in there though. No, because she keeps looking out the hole, looking out the hole, and she looks out the hole again. Again, typical horror movie. I believe they call that a trope. But I'm not 100 percent sure. It's when they have like you know the typical things happen. Mm-hmm. So I was like, she stands up after she looks through the hole because she sees that he's not in there. And again, typical thing, he grabs her from behind, and she fights him off kind of though because he doesn't like take her, take her. At this point, he grabs her from behind, and uh, he gets in the room where she's in. They're like, and they go back out of that little closet area. It's like the big room. Mm-hmm. And fucking, um, he gets it down on the ground. Morgan's finally getting up at this point. I don't think it really shows him getting up, but it shows him running out of nowhere to, like, tackle him. Because uh-huh. remember, he turns his chance on, Aaron's on the ground, he's about to, like, cut, slice her. Morgan comes out of nowhere, pushes him, saves her, and she gets up. Or no, she actually, no, she doesn't get up. This is the part I don't understand. They're scuffling a little bit. The chainsaw falls on the ground. It's like spinning around in a circle, still on. This bitch doesn't even... She should have got her <laughs> ass up, grabbed that chainsaw, and started slicing that leather face. That mm-hmm. would have saved her life and Morgan's life, and she could have got out of there, possibly. But uh, instead, she lays there crying and screaming. The chainsaw eventually stops spinning around. Leatherface, because um, like we said a few minutes ago, Morgan's arms are like handcuffed or tied together. <laughs> Maybe they're hog tied. There's a chandelier in the room, or something. Was it a chandelier? 
No, nah, it's a no. Meat it's hook. Sh- it's a, is that what it was? Not the meat hook? Because yeah. he didn't hang. He like hung his arms on it like this. And this guy had probably one of the worst the worst deaths in the movie. At fucking hands on, he had the worst death in the movie. <laughs> Leatherface turns the chainsaw on and splits up between his legs, cuts his nuts and stuff. It doesn't really show it. It just shows him, like, turning the chainsaw on and going up in that direction. Yeah. And then it goes away. But just imagine, he's going straight, like, if you're going to do that, first of all, if I'm in that situation, you better kill me. That's first, because I don't want to live. You chop my manhood up. Secondly, cut that part last. Cut me from my head down. Word. So, yeah, he got the worst death. Saving Morgan, he got his nuts cut. Or, no, sorry. Morgan saving Aaron got his nuts cut. Crazy. So we go from there. She gets up and starts running again. Mm-hmm. And... They end up in the uh, meat factory that he used to work at, right? Yeah. Well, we don't know that watching this one, but from the new beginning, yeah. you find out that he used to work at that meat factory. He actually got fired from that little place. Yeah. He didn't even get fired. The place shut down. No, the guy told him to leave. That was his last well, day. Well, yeah, because the and place was shutting down. Okay, well, yeah. Remember, because that's why they were so upset, because that was, like, the last business in town or whatever, and <clears throat> the town has no economy anymore or whatever. Jumping into two different movies, but now yeah. thinking about that, because you know, this movie, actually, the new beginning where it actually comes out later, which we should do a podcast on that next, if you're down. But um, what I was going to say with that is... Fuck. Oh. They stand up living there. Because that's all that land and stuff. They're like in that whole, you know, like that whole area, that land. Mm-hmm. They end up pretty much living there, though, because the house is like right up there, right up the, well, yeah, yeah, the yeah. road and stuff. That's that's kind of cool. So, yeah, they go into there and she hides. You know, she's running around. She eventually hides. And, in, the, uh, in the meat factory. Actually, she finds a, a meat cleaver first before she hides. Yeah. And she ends up hiding in a, a meat locker. Yeah. And Leatherface is going around opening lockers and shit, cutting shit up, I guess. And he eventually opens her locker. Or does she open Or does she open it when he's, like, looking around for her? I think she opens it when he's nearby. And she just fucking chops at him, chops his arm. So her chopping at his arm obviously makes it it's one more difficult to carry a chainsaw so he's trying to carry it with one arm spinning around out of control mm-hmm. and she he's escaped. yelling because yeah. he's in pain she escapes she runs out and she runs in the middle of a road and she's lucky she didn't fucking get hit because she stopped truck with a later yeah. little ass out because those don't stop on a dime this shit stopped pretty damn fucking good yeah and she's waving her arms screaming for him to stop she hops in the guy gets out Asks if she's okay, so and then, on and so yep. forth. They Talks get in the truck. The vehicle. They get in the truck. They start driving, and he's asking all these questions. She's just kind of just sitting there quiet. But then she, one thing she does say, she wants to go home. Coincidentally enough, that's the same thing that the uh, suicide hit, girl said. suicide hitchhiker in the beginning of the movie was saying. And then she sees the uh, yummy barbecue sign barbecue and starts freaking time. out just like the last su- yep. suicide girl which we forgot to mention when the girl freaks out when she sees the sign the first girl she jumps in the front and it starts grabbing the steering wheel and shit and the van goes out of control and then Kemper stops the van and, you know like what the fuck pretty much yeah. she does the same thing in the truck yeah so then the guy after that happens the guy gets out the truck and he goes around the truck right mm-hmm. where did he go after that she I don't she eventually got out and took off and stuff where where'd she get the baby from? We can get to that too, cause I know she the baby from the movie from, you know earlier, or whatever she goes back and gets. But it's like where did he go? Cause I don't remember Leatherface. I for some reason I, <coughs> I thought Leatherface came and killed him, or attacked him or something. But you don't see him. No. You for a while. Yeah. And the trucker he just kind of like was that a rest stop? Cause they stopped. He stopped right in front of the barbecue shit, so he probably went in. Went in there, the but it was close. But like it was dark. There was no light on. It's just weird how they like that. Listen, whoever made this movie, can you please explain to me how uh, what the hell happened to that guy? Because in that situation, again, put yourself as the trucker. What the fuck do you do? You pick this girl up. She does all this shit. You're gonna get out your car and just fucking walk in the middle. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck happened? 
I don't know, maybe he's going in for help or whatever. All right. So. We can jump back into the next part. So then. He goes in. He goes wherever he goes. And where does it go from here, though? Like, because, like, this part, this this was kind of a part I didn't like about the movie. It was, like, how they kind of threw the ending. I like the movie overall. Mm-hmm. But, like, kind of how they threw the ending together, I think they could have been a little more detailed. But the baby wasn't even in the trailer anymore, right? It, they never, they didn't get show. From, get him from? Because or from what, he from just when, ended up in the seat at the end? Because you've seen, <coughs> excuse me, you've seen the baby in the trailer earlier, uh-huh. right? You didn't see the baby again until we get to the part we're about to discuss in the cop car. Oh, okay. That's right. I forgot she left the truck there. But my whole thing is, like, what happened in between? Or no, you know what? I'm wrong. She takes I just remembered. No, no, no. She does go back because there's a part where the family's, like, all... She go- She's, like, by the side of the house, and she's looking in the window. She sees the baby, and I think the family's in another room or something. It doesn't show her actually going there and get the baby, uh-huh. but she does somehow go in there and get the baby. And then, like, where the... this is Now, this is the part that throws me off. Like, where was she hiding with the baby and keeping the baby quiet, right? Because, remember, the cop comes, and he sees the truck. He sees the, the tractor trailer sitting outside. Mm-hmm. And he stops his car or whatever, and he takes his keys out, puts them in his pocket. When does... He goes in there, he's talking or whatever trying to get to the truck gets, gets into the truck and uh, he opens the truck because he has his gun out he's getting ready to shoot because he thinks the girl's in there or whatever. nobody's in the truck right mm-hmm. meanwhile you see her oh this is another thing I forgot to mention before you see him open the door to the truck you see her trying to hotwire something yeah and you assume it's the truck you assume it's the truck so you see her trying to hotwire something so then when you open the door like oh shit she's done she's caught whatever mm-hmm. which it wasn't it was the police car my whole thing is, when did she get in the car, right? Yeah. How did she close the door so quiet that he didn't hear it? I mean, it's it raining. It's pouring rain out. But still, you can hear a door slam in the pouring rain. It's not thunder and lightning. It's just pouring rain. And where did she come from? Because like it, shows, it doesn't show her getting the baby. It shows her by the house to get the baby. And then you don't see her again until she's trying to hotwire the car but you don't hear the baby you don't see the baby they just kind of look you see her just down and duck down in the seat trying to hotwire the car there's no mention of the baby if it's your first time seeing the movie you don't know about the baby and if you've never seen this movie and listened to this podcast I'm sorry but that's a big spoiler right there so anyways you know she finally gets the car started by the time she gets the car started the cops jump down from the truck and he hears his car start and the lights are on and she just fucking guns it and she fucking hates my favorite character in the movie, which I wasn't mad at. He deserved it. Yeah. Runs him over. And, you know, she pulls up after she runs him over, stops the car, puts it in reverse. And as as she's doing this, I don't know how the fuck he got his gun out again. He's, like, shooting at the car. Yeah. She runs him over again. Make sure he's dead. And she runs him over again to leave. And she's driving down the street, and out of nowhere, Leatherface comes. And he has one arm. Mm-hmm. with the chainsaw and he like cuts at the car but it just like makes a bunch of sparks and then she drives off and the movie goes off but it, it then it goes into like the um this black and white scene where it shows like cops and it makes it it makes you think like the movie really happened like how we were discussing earlier how you said it's like realistic mm-hmm. but they just upped it a lot from the Ed Gein thing they just took bits and pieces I think he just ate people but uh it made it look and Another thing I'll say after I say this, they, but it made it look like it was like a real crime scene, like from like a real, real footage of something that really happened in real life, not the movie. It was like all in black and white. You see the cameras shaking and all this stuff, and then you see. Uh, and the cool thing about them making it in black and white is, but remember, this movie's supposed to be from '74. This, it's, you know, the stuff that happened is uh, they showed like certain scenes, like they showed. Remember, they were showing like pictures from the movie. They're showing the the. Great Scratch things from marks the, on the wall from the fingernails and the old hair clubs or clubs of hair and shit and teeth too, right? Yeah. Well, if I, I own, I lost it or got it scratched up. Unfortunately, I still have the little tin from the movie. When you got the movie, it came with like a little tin thing of the cover of the movie. If you seen the cover of the movie, it was like a little tin, shiny tin. And then in the movie case, it came with like a little envelope 
it said evidence and it came with like pictures of all that stuff you seen from the movie like the teeth the um the hair all that yeah. which was pretty cool so then you getting it you're like oh wow this is cool and obviously it's not real but that was I thought that was a cool twist to the movie then the movie pretty much goes off after that and so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna ask you a couple questions just turn it into like my little segment my end segment ish talk for a few more minutes so I'm gonna call this segment I have a name for it I wanna do more things with it but I'm gonna open it up right now it's called Slicing and Dicing with Sir Sturdy so, my first question to you is, what do you rate this movie? One to five chainsaws. Five being excellent. One obviously being terrible. And you could do half if you have to, like two I and give, a half. I'll give it a three. Give it a three? Okay. And bef- I'll answer the same question, but before I answer that, tell me why you gave it a three. Because of the little questions that it left out that we were going over, like, how the fuck did she just end up with the baby? Okay. What happened to the trucker? I just, like, I prefer a movie with full details. I'm going to give it a... You know, I'm going to give it a, a three also for the same reasons. Like, I wish there was more detail. And then I wish... Again, it's with a horror movie. I love horror. It's my favorite genre, like I said. But I wish there was a little more kind of common sense when certain shit happened, like... With the hitchhiker. You see her, she's just, like, walking down the street in her own, like, I don't even know. She like, she didn't even realize the, va- the van was behind her. Yeah. Now, anybody that's been down the street before, you hear, even if you don't hear it, you just sense something that's behind you. She didn't sense it or nothing. Mm-hmm. So that should have threw you off. And then just, like, the way the fucking town was, like, nobody cared <laughs> at all. Like, do you go to the first old lady at the gas station? She doesn't care. You talk to the sheriff. He doesn't get care at all. He doesn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it just kind of goes on from there, but I mean, overall, like with the with the gore, with the kills, I thought that was pretty cool. That's what bumps it up. The story overall was pretty good. I kind of like I said, I wish there was more detail to it. Um, what was I gonna say? Give me one second. Like with uh, the family, like the extra people in the family, I kind of wish they discussed them or showed them a little bit more, gave them more of a part. Yeah. Just the little pieces, like the little boy would have been cool if he had more of a part. And if you've seen what happened to him after he helped the girl, mm-hmm. maybe it's like, say, I'm not saying they did, but say they abandoned him or whatever. Or you never you know. You think she would have took him, too. He did save her damn life. That, too. That, too. And then, like, I mean, you don't have to go into where, like, after she gets away, you don't really need to know what happens after that. Mm-hmm. You really don't. But, uh, like, uh, shit, where am I going with this? You got anything else on the ratings? Well, I'm thinking what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, like you, oh, okay, like you were saying with the trucker, they should have had something. Like it, it just seems weird because even back in those days, don't they have like the CB radios? Yeah. Why didn't he call in on that at all? True. That's one. So that's another issue I have. <laughs> I was just about to give this movie a four or three and a half, but I'm gonna stick with my three now. Again, he runs off. You don't, like, there's just nothing else with him after that, which is kind of strange to me. And when she's hot in the car, and it's pouring rain now, that, you mean to tell me that baby sleep through that whole time? Well, or he was con- sitting there awake, right, where she fell off. She was kind of, like, holding on to him so he didn't fall forward. Something like that. But, I mean, he was just, obviously, again, it's just a movie, but you would think, like, the baby would be crying or something oh, would be yeah. going on as she's hot in the car. Yeah. And doing all that because you don't know the baby, you don't you don't know the baby's there until you see her drive off. Mm-hmm. And this is after this is even after Leatherface hits the car, right? Or is it bef- right before? No, she pulls right off, and then he hits the car. And, and then she's driving down the road. And then she's driving. And then you see the baby. Okay, no, I, I mean, oh, like I said, overall it was a, it was a three. My next question to you: um, favorite kill in the movie? Not that there was. Too too many that they showed. Probably the suicide. That was like I said, that was probably my favorite part in the movie. But uh it's tough because the the fucking kill with the saw going up Off the was dope. Yeah. But maybe I'll give it to the suicide one. As fucked up as that sounds. 
but be only because they just had the best visual. That, that's what I was gonna say because the visual, like if they would have did the whole thing with the nut going up cut, and the way the camera zoomed out of the head, like but it's, it had a, it was zoomed in to like the back of her head. Oh yeah, and then, and then zoomed then out. As her head fell, like it zoomed out. It that's was, true. Yeah, they really went into detail with that. They should have went the more. How do we mention it with that? That's another reason why. I'm. I like this movie overall a lot, but now I'm thinking my three might have to go to a two and a half, and I'm about to tell you why. Because with the kills that they did show, they weren't really detailed with them too, too much. Like, when Aaron killed Andy because he asked her to stab him in the stomach, that was a good one. But when um, Pepper died, you didn't really see too much. And yeah. it was, like, right in front of you, but you really didn't. Like, they could have went more into it with that one. And the same thing with Morgan's kill. If they would have did, like, what you visualized in your mind with the Morgan kill especially, that mm-hmm. right there, to me, would have bumped it up to a three. Because I'm could have also shown things like him sewing. Uh, we forgot to mention this. Oh, but Kemper. When he, showed, he sewed Kemper's face onto his own. When he cut, yeah, because he cut Kemper's show face him, Cutting Kemper's face off? Yeah. That would have helped. Like, stitching it onto his own face. But <clears throat> they did kind of show him stitching the face, though, but they didn't, you couldn't tell it was Kemper's at the time, could you? Or could you? I mean, you could only assume because that was all, the only person he had at that point. Because I was going to say, at that, with that being right there, <laughs> that part, it would have been dope if they did do what you just said, but that part kind of doesn't bother me because, again, if you're going into this movie, you've just seen it, you still don't know where Kemper is. Maybe he survives, you know what I mean? Like, maybe he comes out at the end. Yeah. Obviously, he doesn't. But, yeah, that's... that's So, I'm going to... Because the kills weren't... The one kill was amazing. When she... You know, the, the gun kill. But as far as, like, Leatherface killing people in the movie, I'm bumping it down to a two and a half only because of that... Like that right there, besides the details, that bumped it down to a three from a four. But a two and a half because of the like I said, the whole kills weren't like really gruesome detailed kills like we would want them to be. Yeah. And um what was I gonna I was gonna say something else to you. Who's your favorite character was the cop you said, right? Yeah. Just because of his personality, his attitude and shit. Yeah, he was funny. He was fucking hilarious. He's an asshole like Negan is in The Walking Dead. I don't watch that show, but I get what you mean. Now, being that we just watched this movie, would you reckon? Would you recommend this movie? Yeah, well, I would recommend the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise as a whole. As a whole, this is one of my favorite ones. Okay, and I'm only asking just because after we discussed the movie, the ratings we gave him. Like to me, it was real. It was a really good movie. I'm just giving it that rating. Just on certain details mm-hmm. but I too would recommend this movie and obviously for someone who's never seen it I'd recommend it my next question to you is seeing as how we know how the next one starts the new beginning mm-hmm. would you if you were to recommend this movie would you have that person watch that one first and then this one because the way they are or would you have them watch it the same way that we've seen them growing up I mean, I don't really think it would matter. I guess, I guess it would make sense to watch the the prequel the first. first yeah. Even though it came out after, that's I just thought of that. That's why I was figuring I'd ask you. Like, it, it probably doesn't really matter, but I would say because we watched both of them, you might see the connection. You, well, depending on the person, you might see the connection a little bit more if you watch the new beginning first, just with the little part with the job because we didn't finish that movie, and then going to this one, how they're like in the same area. So you might kind of see it from that. And um, you got any questions for me? Uh, no, just thanks for letting me be on the podcast. It was fun. Well, I definitely appreciate it. I'm trying to think if I can ask you some more questions about this before we get on. So, actually, I do got another one. I did shoot that at you about watching the new beginning. Would you want to do that next? Yeah. Next podcast? Well, next time we record together? And you could say right on here, is there any other movie you'd want to do that you can think of off the top of your head? Uh, maybe we could find out the movie that I was speaking of in the beginning of this podcast. And then... What was... Oh, that was, it had something to do with a voodoo doll. Yeah. So... I'm sure if I ask my dad, he'll have... I just got to explain the movie to him. Maybe we could do that one, too. Okay. So anybody who's listening to this podcast, if you've seen a movie with a voodoo doll in it... <laughs> Post it on the Facebook page, the Horror with Search 30 page, or email me, Horror with Search 30, 
at gmail.com horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com and just let us know let me know if you know what movie he's talking about again there's a voodoo doll and whoever has the doll if they squeeze it or whatever do whatever to that doll it's a, like a doll of certain people right yeah. certain dolls it fucks the person up breaks their leg or whatever that's the first thing there's movie. more to it though there's like little yeah I don't know voodoo doll horror movie we could probably Google that and possibly find it. Watch a couple trailers or whatever. Maybe. So, um, that being said, thank you for being on the podcast. I had a great time. Do you have anything you want to plug? Anything going on no. outside of here? Besides, I mean, you could throw your coaching thing. Just, I'm no. Good. Good. All right. Well, like I said, thanks for being on the podcast. Everybody who's listening, or just going to listen, I should say, thanks for listening. And, um, Again, if you want to be on this podcast, all you have to do, we can have a random horror chat or we can discuss a movie or a little bit of both like how we did with this one. Email me at horrorwithsir.sturdy at gmail.com and just let me know who you are. Let me know what movie or topic you want to discuss and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We'll discuss a time and a day more than likely to be on the weekend, like a Saturday or Sunday possibly a Friday night and the way we can do this obviously if I don't personally know you we'll figure something out there's a thing called the Zencaster program I used to record on if I personally know you we can link up and do this in person or over the phone whatever's easier for you but like I said thanks for listening to the podcast and I'll see you